morning over Alcatraz Island where today hundreds of people gathered for the annual Indigenous People Thanksgiving sunrise service and this year's special it's been 50 years since the Alcatraz occupation a watershed moment for tribes standing up for their rights. It also led to a federal policy shift in native land rights. KPX5 photojournalist Chris Bellini and Kenny Choi show us why this group is choosing to remember the island as a beacon of hope. Set against a dark pre-dawn sky, Alcatraz stands out like a monument to the once harsh and forbidding prison. But on the main courtyard, a roaring fire creates an inviting glow for hundreds of people gathered in darkness, waiting for the sunrise. And with a warm glow from the east, everyone welcomes the sun. The rising of the sun, a new day, a new relationship, a new way to work together to preserve Mother Earth. Steady drumbeats fill the chilly morning air. The radiant sunlight shines on members of different tribes from across the country united on Alcatraz for the annual Thanksgiving sunrise ceremony. To start the day with prayer and acknowledgement and appreciation for all that continues in our life. To remember those people, the ancestors who are here, but to pray for all humanity. Today, Alcatraz is not a reminder of an oppressive prison, but rather a symbol of hope. We consider Alcatraz to be the spark of the modern day indigenous movement around the world. This sacred event commemorates the 19-month occupation of Alcatraz by Native American activists, a movement which was ignited by the vision and perseverance of an inspiring leader. There was a man, his name was Richard Oakes. He said that something that I needed to do as a young man was to go out and, and help, you know, and be supportive in, in helping the people and fighting for the people, fighting for a, a, a righteous cause. That's what brought me to Alcatraz. We needed to come together as a people to, to be recognized. 50 years ago, Indians of all tribes occupied the island, claiming that under the Treaty of Fort Laramie, any unused or abandoned federal land would be returned to the indigenous people that once inhabited it. There are over 371 treaties, all of which have been violated. However, it does not take away the legal standing and the fact that treaties signed in the last century or two centuries ago are still valid today as the day they were signed. Although the occupation ended on June 11, 1971, the movement would break free from the boundaries of Alcatraz Island. So what started here as a small occupation grew to a worldwide indigenous movement that established now a human rights standard for indigenous peoples throughout the world, 375 million indigenous peoples throughout the world. I think that Richard's uh, legacy is still working. You know, I think the idea is still, still going and I, I don't think it'll quit. As the ceremony comes to an end, gathers embrace renewed spirits. Everybody goes away feeling lighthearted and content. And recognize that that spark from 50 years ago is still bright as ever. And so we'll see another 50 years of continued indigenous resistance and us fighting against pipelines, us fighting for protection of the environment and fighting for protection of our future generations. There's a new exhibit on Alcatraz Island in honor of the 50th anniversary. Uh, it will be there for as long as the occupation lasted, for 19 months. And in other news, former 49ers quarterback Colin Kaepernick also smoke at, uh, spoke at this morning's sunrise ceremony on Alcatraz. He talked about carrying on the legacy of the occupation of 1969. Actor and activist and Bay Area native Danny Glover was also at the rally today.